Well, there were a number of high points and low points during the recent months of the election campaign. But for me, the low point came during the final leaders debate between Chris Hipkins and Christopher Luxon. Let's check it out. So during the leaders debate on TVNZ, there was discussion around the suitability and accountability of members of parliament and Nationals' Christopher Luxon raised the issue of recent cases of Labour cabinet ministers getting caught out. Now, this included the ex-Minister of Justice, Kitty Allen, who ple uh, recently pleaded not guilty to a charge of refusing to accompany police, which arose from alleged drunk driving in late July. The ex-Justice -Justice Minister also faces a charge of careless driving for the incident in which she crashed into a parked car in Wellington. Kitty Allen was stripped of her portfolios after the crash. And, well, it's kind of ironic that we're talking about someone who was Minister of Justice at the time. Minister of Police Stuart Nash was sacked after disclosing confidential information from a cabinet meeting to do two businessmen, both former donors. There was also Mecca Faiteri and Shannon Halbert, who were accused of bullying staff members. And that claim was also made by Hamilton West MP Gore of Sharma, who was removed from Labour's caucus in August uh, for breaching last year for breaching confidentiality and losing his colleagues' trust because he was making these claims. And then there was Cabinet Minister Michael Wood, who failed to disclose conflicts of interest related to shareholdings. National, of course, weren't perfect. There were claims that Tim Vandermolen had bullied a Labour MP, Shannon Halbert, who ironically also got accused of bullying. And claims were also made about Elizabeth Kedikedi from the Green Party bullying staff. And there may be others. Our politicians in office should be held to account. They are adults. They are political leaders. And there is a parliamentary standard. We expect high standards from our leaders. They are our elected officials and representatives. Now, during the debate on One News last week, as Labour leader Chris Hipkins attempted to defend these MPs, he made an interesting statement. Let me show you the segment. Said ruling out Winston Peters was an example of leadership. Why haven't you shown any? We, we, we have said to you very clearly, I want New Zealanders to understand we're going to be a government that governs for them and actually gets things done, Chris. That's something you haven't delivered. Was this an we want a strong two-party coalition arrangement with National and Act. And as I said, I'll pick up the phone with New Zealand first in order to avoid the chaos that will ensue with Labour to party. The real the chaos Greens. would be you trying to deal with Winston Peters and David Seymour around a cabinet no, table. No, They'd be running circles around no, you. No, no disrespect, Chris. You haven't been able to manage your own cabinet. You lost five cabinet ministers in this year alone. I've set very, nice, very high standards for ministers Only when the and when media they don't meet them, they don't continue in their yeah, jobs. Yeah, but you've, you've had five cabinet ministers go on, on depart under your leadership. I think people and in the glass houses throw, shouldn't be throwing stones. None of, throw, my, none of my MPs beat people up with a bed leg. <laughs> yeah, so you saw there, National Party leader Christopher Luxon took a shot at the five ministers who have left Labour, to which Hipkins replied with a reference to the accusations made against National MP Sam Uffendale from his youth. And he says, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. None of my MPs beat people up with a beard leg. Now, of course, Hipkins was referring to what many people would know about uh, this national MP, Sam Offendale, who, when he was a young teenager, committed some violent bullying against other students. In 1999, he was asked to leave King's College after he and some friends had beaten a 13-year-old boy with what the victims thought were beard legs. So that's a reference that Hipkins was making. Uh, leaving the victim with severe bruising and trauma. So as a result, Offendale was suspended from the school and it was a costly mistake because it was a prestigious school that he could no longer attend. So you could say that he paid the consequences. But most importantly, this was an action when he was a teenager. And as the left always like to say, we should treat teenagers differently to adults when it comes to criminal activity, but not when they get into politics apparently. Now, Sam Offendale said, quote, it was one of the silliest, stupidest things I've ever done. I really regretted it. I do really regret it still, end quote. And to his credit, he attempted to contact the victim later in life to make amends. Now, perhaps it was because he was genuinely repentant. Perhaps this was because he was about to go into politics. Only he can answer that one. The victim said that Offendale had contacted him out of the blue through a mutual acquaintance 
a year before Uffendale had entered Parliament and that he wanted to apologise, which after some consideration the victim agreed to. At the time he said he would never forgive the boy who hurt him, but forgave the man Uffendale had become. But then when the victim saw that Uffendale was now a national MP, uh, he questioned the apology, how genuine it was, rightly or wrongly. The problem with Chris Hipkins making the statement and not allowing for useful indiscretions means that we are potentially limiting leadership in this country to those with a perfect record. But aren't mistakes a part of growing up and learning? I don't think any one of us could say that we haven't made big mistakes in our life, either as young people or even as adults that we don't deeply regret, but from which we have hopefully learned from. Maybe they happened even last week, maybe even today. Now this is in no way to mitigate what Sam did in school and what the victim suffered. It was on the extreme end. The victim was correct when he said he could never forgive the boy who hurt him, but would forgive the man that Sam had become. At what point do we say this is part of who you were, but it's not part of who you are now? Do we still believe in a clean slate? I can understand that it's great to have politicians who haven't made any mistakes, but in the real world, we also will have politicians who have made mistakes, have apologised, have reconciled, have learned from their mistakes, and are better for it. And to me, that shows character. The other MPs that I mentioned, the Labour cabinet ministers amongst them, those were errors of judgment and behaviour that are current, present day, so the consequences apply today. Sam Uffendale's terrible actions were 24 years ago, when he was a teenager. So that's why I thought Chris Hipkins' comment was a political low blow, made in desperation for points, because he was staring at political defeat. And that's why I think it was the low point of the whole election campaign. If we are looking for politicians who have never made a mistake, have never done something they regret, we may find that we struggle to get enough politicians to fill all the seats in Parliament. Life is full of making mistakes and errors of judgement, taking bad advice, ignoring our conscience which is telling us not to go down a certain path. I think it's how we deal with that mistake, that failing, that reveals our true character and our potential for leadership. Well that's my view. What do you think? Do our dumb actions as teenagers disqualify us from leadership? Do even our past actions as adults permanently disqualify us? Or does it depend on what the action was and what the consequence at the time was in our response? I'm interested to know your thoughts. Share your views in the comments section.